Okay, so this is the inside of the vehicle. This is a 1987 Defender. It's fitted with a LT77 gearbox, um, which is very specific by the tunnel, and that's the difference in the carpet set. But we've cleaned it all out. We're ready to install the carpet. Now, we're using adhesive glue. That is included in the kit. It's fairly easy to apply, so we're going to get started and see what we think. Okay, so we've got our first panel in, and it looks good. So we're now going to do the driver's side footwell. And uh, again, we're just going to put a coat of the adhesive on the back of this uh, carpet here, and on the footwell itself. Okay, on this one you have to position the holes at the top and just slide them over your pedals. But make sure you get them over first because as soon as that contacts the glue it's going to start to stick. So we're going to line it up with the top first. So it's in position, it does look good. The only thing I'm not happy about is the uh, return spring on the clutch pedal is actually underneath the carpet and I don't think that's such a good idea. I think actually I'm going to cut that and make sure that the spring's exposed. Okay, clearly what I should have done is actually released the uh, return spring on the clutch pedal before I fitted the carpet. I haven't done that and it's in place now so it's too late. But what I can do is I've actually cut this section out to free up that exposed spring I'm actually tempted to leave it. It doesn't really need to have the carpet behind it. It's only going to get worn away anyway by the spring. So I'll leave it as it is and I'm quite happy with that. Now when you start fitting these carpet panels into the vehicle, uh, a good tool to have is uh, a paint scraper. Now, you make sure you've got one that's nice and stiff. If you use one that's too flexible and sharp, you're going to cut through the material itself. So use quite a, a heavy duty one, nice and thick, doesn't bend too much. And just use it to tuck the fabric right into the corners. If you've not got it quite straight, you can just get it pushed in and it makes it a lot easier to get everything to fit properly. So the next two sections we've got to fit are for the inside um, of the wing here. And uh, they are handed, so make sure you've got the right one for the right side. And the long edge should sit on the top. Now, they're quite long and there's a good chance that we're going to have to actually trim them back a little bit. What I'll do is I'll just lift the, uh, the rubber seal of the door up a little bit get it right up against the edge and then we should just, if we cut it, if it's not that clean, we can cover it with this rubber here. Now we're just using the paint scraper to tuck it in. Okay, so we've got a nice finish on there, we can just put the rubber strip back in position. And there we go. Now the hardest part of this really is making sure you don't get the glue on um, the rest of your carpet. Now you'll see, possibly, if it's close enough, we've actually got some glue overspray near the edges of the carpet already, so we're not going to go too close. I'm going to try and keep it to the main body, and then hopefully this glue will work um, to secure the carpet anyway. And we have got glue on the other side of the carpet as well, so better just to stay away from your existing carpet when you're doing this next bit. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that's come out. Don't forget when you've got your carpet mat in there, that's actually going to cover some of this area where the join is, but we've done a good job and it's uh, nice and tidy. So we're starting to see a real transformation now inside, and we're now fitting the uh, bits of carpet that go onto the seat boxes. Now these resonate quite a lot, and that's where you get a lot of your cab noise from. So the guys at Exmoor Trim have fitted them with some very basic soundproofing, and hopefully that's going to make a big difference. Okay, so it's clear that these have been made for left-hand and right-hand drive vehicles because there's been no allowance made for the handbrake lever. So we're going to have to cut that out. What I'm going to try and do is cut it from the centre here so we don't actually cut into this ribbing at the top and try and get that to sit over the top of the handbrake lever itself. Got to get it lined up at the back and right at the bottom. Now I guess if you wished, you could actually take your seats off and remount them. But, if you're careful, you should be able to tuck this underneath. 
Okay, so this is the section I've had to take out uh, for the handbrake lever, which isn't too much of a problem. Um, we have got a bit of a gap on the other side. Now that's nothing to do with the hole I've cut, it's just actually the length of this piece itself. But hopefully the, uh, the tunnel carpet's going to cover that. We'll have a look. Now to the other side, it should be a bit easier without that hole to be cut. We're nearly out of glue, so it's just as well as the end. Um, I've put the actual uh, acoustic matting in place first to make sure that we don't get any glue on anything else. We're just going to glue the sides on this and also this piece of the tunnel. Now, if I'm honest, I'd say that this side is actually covered a lot better than the other side. Don't know why that is, it just feels a little bit tight and I've got some ripples in the fabric. But if you're like me and you were a little bit of a bad shot and you've got some spray glue on the carpet, don't worry, you can rub some of it off and then we'll get some solvent cleaner on there and tidy it up. So we're ready for the foot mats now and hopefully that'll be it. Now this vehicle's just had the foot wells repaired so we know they're in really good order. We're not going to have to get in there to service them for any time in the future. So we're actually going to glue these mats down and then fit rubber mats over the top for everyday use. Well, it's been a long day getting the Defender finished, um, but I have to say I'm really impressed with this carpet set. I've just been down to the workshop in the vehicle and it's so much quieter. I really didn't think it would make that much difference, but obviously the soundproofing around the tunnel here, um, and obviously on the seat boxes as well, really keeps the din down. So definitely a thumbs up. It's definitely an upgrade that I'd consider um, having if on my own vehicle. And certainly if you're looking at one of our vehicles, one of our ex-military rebuilds, um, it's a quite inexpensive option and uh, it makes a lot of difference but have a look around the truck uh, just going to quickly show you now some details and um, if you've got any questions just uh, get in touch